Hello and welcome to Python Fundamentals. In this course, we learn the underpinning Python programming skills, preparing for our journey towards mastering the Django framework and the Python programming language. This tutorial is part of a series of tutorials. You can find the link to the whole playlist in the video description. This tutorial is from our Python Programming Fundamentals for Django Developers course, which you can find and purchase on Udemy. You will find all the latest and updated tutorials, as well as resources and assessments to help accelerate your learning of the subject. The link to the course, which will always provide the best price, can be found in the video description. Probably one of the most commonly used building blocks of the Python programming language are functions. If you have been following from the start of this course, we have been slowly introducing the concept or idea of a function. Taking a look at some code that we've written previously, you can see here that this homepage function here, the purpose or role of this function is to return the homepage back to the user when requested. In addition, we did make a, a separate function here for a separate page. So this function here called add new, this was specifically designed to return a template to the user and to also capture information from a form that's placed on the page, which is returned to the user when they request this URL or resource. So let's not worry about the finer details here of exactly what the function does, but you can see what we're doing here with functions. We're breaking the code into smaller chunks. By defining different functions, these functions all perform a very specific operation. So we could define a function as a group of related statements code that performs a specific task. To emphasize this description of a function, we have also in this course been introducing the Python built-in functions. Each built-in function performs a specific operation or provides us a specific set of tools. For example, we introduced in this course the print built-in function, which will output a string to the terminal. So let's just go ahead and run this example and we output hello world. What we can do in addition to this, if you remember, we also utilized the type built-in function. So type allowed us to identify what type of data that we're working with. What's interesting here, for example, let's go ahead and type print. So what we're going to do here actually is print type print. Okay, we'll do this uh, in line rather than in the terminal here because we haven't really introduced the terminal. So let's go in. We also introduced the type built-in, which allowed us to identify the type of data that we are working with or the data type. So let's go ahead and pass in X. Now we want to print this to the terminal. So we're going to use print here to do that. So let's go ahead and run that. You can see that this is a, an integer. So this variable here is storing an integer type of data. Now let's just change this X into, for example, one of the built-ins, for example, print. Let's see what happens when we do that. So Python automatically identifies that print is a type of, or built-in or a method. So it displays the class here, built-in function or method. So we can pass in any of these functions here. Python will tell us that it is a built-in function. And that's quite handy, for example, if you are working with functions and you're not entirely sure, for example, what to name your function. So you end up naming your function, potentially one of the built-ins. Now that is something that we want to try and avoid. So if you are building your own functions, you do want to try and avoid building a function with the same name as one of the built-ins because potentially that's going to cause conflicts. So for example, any of these we pass in ABS, that should also then return built-in functional method. What is going to be highlighted in the next tutorials in this section of the course is that the function encapsulates or separates tasks. So we've already seen that in the few examples that we provided already. One of the main benefits of building a function and performing a separate specific task 
is that it's going to let you reuse that code. Remember we mentioned previously in this course, we want to try and follow the dry principles. Don't repeat yourself. Functions are a great way of breaking code into smaller components, performing specific tasks that can be called and utilized throughout your code. So by breaking down your code into functions, that can make your code much easier to test because you haven't got large blocks of code which perform multiple operations and potentially it makes it easier to debug. As we move through the next tutorials in this course, we'll move through some different examples which will highlight some of these points.